Are you investing the money in yourself to take courses on leadership and management and becoming a better breadwinner? I don't care about the clinical side. That's not making you any more money, okay? I wanna hear about the clinical management and leadership side that make you run a better practice. And if you're not doing that, then you gotta start. Hello there, everybody, and welcome to another episode of your Five Minute Friday. And you know, in the seven and a half years that we started Orthopreneurs, I've been getting so many messages from doctors, and there's one message, one message that breaks my heart every time. And that is, hey, Glenn, I just wanted to reach out to you and let you know, I really want to go to Summit, or I really want to get the Orthopreneurs University course, or I really want to go to do X, or I really want to do this, or I really want to do that, but I can't afford it. I've been practicing for five years, seven years, 10 years, and I still make less money than most orthodontists and less than associates or, or barely can pay my bills. Breaks my heart to hear that. And I often ask them questions. Why is this happening? You've been practicing how long? Without any judgment, I'm trying to get to the bottom of the problem. How long have you been practicing for? The answer is often five years, seven years, 10 years, whatever it may be. I spoke to somebody not long ago who's been practicing 30 years. And I said, okay, and you're not making the living you'd like to make. And just a frame of reference, what kind of living do you make now? This is private. We'll keep it quiet. I won't tell anybody what you're telling me. And the numbers are often shockingly low. You know, I can understand if someone says, you know, I'd like to make a million dollars a year. And right now I'm only making 600,000, right? 400,000, 300,000, whatever number it is. But I've, I've met more than a couple of orthodontists who've been practicing more than three or four or five years who are barely taking home a living. And I have to ask some questions of them at that point to try to help them. And there are some things I see that run in common in these cases. In some cases, not all, they view orthodontics much more as a profession than a business. You know, I'm an orthodontist. You know, there are things I won't do. I won't advertise. I won't go on social media and push my practice. I won't ask for Google reviews. I'm a professional. And I think that that's an outdated concept. I think we have to sort of let go of that. And um, again, I've told my kids many, many, many times that when their father passes away, hopefully at a ripe, ripe old age, if people come up to them at the funeral and say, you know, your dad was an amazing orthodontist, then I failed in my job in life. I take my job seriously. I want to do great ortho, but there are so many other places I hope to leave my mark on this world. And if it comes down to me doing great ortho and not being able to make a living for my family because I'm so rigid in my belief that there are things that are preventing me from being more productive, that's a real problem. And so if you find yourself falling into that trap a little bit, I certainly would you know, give it a second thought and say, are there compromises you can make that still allow you to be an exceptional orthodontist, but to make a better living? And this applies across all areas of orthodontics. What good is, a, is the best orthodontist in town if they're not making a living? And I used to have a great teacher in dental school way back when, who was probably one of my best teachers, but, but he had gone bankrupt twice. And that's why he taught at school. And it broke my heart. So let's talk about another thing. I hear way, way, way too many people who aren't willing to invest in themselves. Hey, Glenn, I really would love to go to Summit this year, but I can't afford it. I really would love to take this one course that somebody's presenting out there, but I can't afford it. And I look at them and go, can you not afford it? Or are you more scared to make the investment? Because I can tell you, taking Summit as an example, if you're going to spend the $1,500 or $2,000, or let's go even far and say $3,000 for airfare, hotel, and what have you to go to a Summit, you don't think you're going to get at least one new case start out of it? You know, one new case start at a 40% overhead means that if you come in to Summit and get one case start out of it, you broke even completely. So I don't want to hear people say, I can't afford to invest in myself because there's no better investment on this planet than you, right? So you've got to start investing in yourself. When I came out of ortho residency, um, even when I had small kids, I must have spent tens of thousands of dollars on myself taking CE courses, flying to ortho offices, and watching people uh, going to meetings. That's how you're going to get better. That's how you're going to pay yourself back later on in droves. So don't give me the, I can't afford it. You choose not to do it. 
There were times I could not put food on the table and I found a way to make an investment in myself, particularly in the management and leadership side of my practice life, so that I could make a better living. You're probably a good enough orthodontist coming out of residency to serve your patients' basic needs. Yeah, you're gonna round yourself off and get better, become more efficient, but you did not get enough to become an exceptional leader, manager, and basically breadwinner when you were in ortho residency. So spend the time and the money on yourself going to everything you can get to and don't let your accountant, I hate that one, my accountant told me I can't afford. I'm sorry, you can beep this one out. I'm gonna beep myself, bull shreep, okay? It's bull crap if you say you can't afford to invest in yourself. There is not an orthodontist alive who can't spend $1,000 to go take a management course or $2,000 to go to Summit. And you know what? If you want to go to Summit and you genuinely can't afford it, I will not take payment now. You can pay me next year when you have more money in your pocket. And if you don't have more money next year, then that's on you. That's not on anybody else. But if you're not spending money on courses, how are you going to learn more? Through osmosis? It doesn't work that way. And the third thing that I see gets in people's way is, I can't because of my family. Now, I respect it. I'm a father of three. I'm married. Knock on wood, coming up on 30 years of marriage this August. And you know what? My wife knew that we had three children and the fourth child was our practice. And I needed to go take courses. Now, if you're a mom and you don't have a supportive husband or you're a single mom or a single dad, it's difficult. But you and your spouse need to have an agreement that, that if they're a professional, they're gonna get to take development courses. And if you're a professional, you're gonna take development courses. I've had people drop out of our Orthopreneurs RD group um, because they said, you know, I just can't make the courses. You don't even know the dates of the courses a year in advance and you're gonna tell me you can't make them? I am sorry, I am sorry. I laid into somebody who said they can't leave the house to take a course. I said, that's a day and a half per year. One course in RD is a full day Friday and a half day Saturday. You're telling me you can't get away from your family for 36 hours to take a course, given nine months notice, given a year's notice? Again, BS, total crap. You just don't want to go. I don't know what it is. I know it's not your family that's keeping you from going. I know it's not personal obligation from going. There are exceptions. I get that. There are people whose lives are so, so difficult. They cannot get away for a day and a half. But that is the exception, not the rule. So my question to you is this. If you are not making the living you want to make, no matter where you are in practice, are you investing the money in yourself to take courses on leadership and management and becoming a better breadwinner? I don't care about the clinical side. That's not making you any more money, okay? I want to hear about the clinical management and leadership side to make you run a better practice. And if you're not doing that, then you got to start, right? If you're not taking the time off to go take these courses, you've got to start. Because if you don't take the time off to go to the courses, if you're not spending the money to take these courses, if you're not investing in yourself to become better at what you're doing as a leader, as a manager, as a breadwinner of your family, or a co-breadwinner of your family, how do you expect things to change? Accident? What do you think, putting time in automatically causes you to get better? No. You, if you keep making the same mistakes over and over again, or you don't even know the vision of where you need to be at some point down the road, that's a real problem. So again, this is admonishment to you. As we would say in the, in the religious world, I'm admonishing you. If you're taking tons of courses, if you're investing in yourself, then good for you. Keep it up. Make it more. You can't ever give enough to yourself. I've been practicing 32 years and I still make my way to as many courses as I can get my hands on. I still go to every single RD course. Not because I run it, because I want to learn this stuff. So again, Wherever you are, you can make a change, but it doesn't happen by accident. It doesn't happen by saying, I can't go on a course. I have to be home for my kids. That is crap, okay? I know moms out there, single moms, orthodontic single moms, who are taking three, four, seven courses a year, and they make it worth their while. And if you can't, what's your plan to make it a reality a year or two or three from now? All right, because it's a lame excuse when I've heard it for the second or third or fourth time from the same person. All right. What you're basically saying is, I graduated ortho residency. I expect to make a great living. I'm not really going to take a lot more courses. I'm focused on other stuff in my life. And that's that. And I have no right to complain. Good. At least now you understand. But if you're looking to make a better life, that's the kind of person I want to be around. That's the person I want to learn with 
and, and, and four. And so please, sign up for some of our courses. Go take some courses. Go visit offices. Become the best you can be. Report back to be your success because nothing makes me happier than to see you out there living your best, best practice, lowest stress, most profitable day-to-day -day life. I want to hear more of that. So reach out to me. Come to Summit, opsummit2024.com. Um, I promise you, you will live a much better, more profitable, lower stress life by going to Summit. Love you all. Take care.